how can you help somebody with a seizure on the airplane or in the school or anywhere? I was flying on a, on a plane going to a conference and all of a sudden after half an hour of from takeoff, all of a sudden the overhead start calling, is there any medical personnel on the flight for a medical emergency? So at that time I rang my bell and then the flight attendant came and grabbed me and said like, we have a flight uh, emergency on the front. And then I came there and then somebody was having a seizure. And at that time we have to help them on the air without having any equipment. So the way to help somebody with a seizure is first yourself to stay calm and cool. Because if we have two, if, if you're like not calm and, and irritated, then you have two people to help, not just one. So stay calm and then time the seizure because it's very important to time the seizure, how long it lasted, because if the seizure lasts for five minutes, that is a status epilepticus and needs more medical care. So time the seizure. The second thing you check for any medical alerts or bracelets so that patients is identified with any medical condition. And then the second thing is that keep them safe. So keep the patient safe by, uh, patients will be shaking, so make sure they do not hit their head to anything sharp, um, uh, chair, or anything that might hurt themselves. And also you can put a uh, pillow under their head so that they do not rub their head uh, on the ground. So make sure that they're safe and make sure that the environment is safe around them. And then the third thing is that make sure the airway is open and you can achieve that by if you see anything uh, on, uh, on the mouth to clean it up and, and then also put them on their side. So if they vomit or any secretion will come out of the mouth will not stay inside. And if they are grinding their teeth or, or biting their tongue, do not put anything in their mouth and do not worry that they're gonna swallow their tongue because tongue swallow is a myth and it never happened and will never happen again. So tongue swallow does not happen. What happens really is that somebody will grind their teeth and bite their tongue and then that by itself can you know cause blood in the mouth or something. And then after the seizure, somebody will be worn out and then the brain sometimes will stop breathing and that will cause somebody to die or somebody to have a, a consequence after the seizure. It is not the swallow of the tongue. The airway is, is open, but the it, message is not coming from the brain to start the breathing. So that is the problem. So what you need to do is you need to stimulate them, wake them up, shake them off so that they will reset the cycle and then start breathing again and help them. And then also after the timing of the seizure, it is important to measure how long the seizure lasted. If the seizure, most of the seizures will stop after one to two minutes, but if the seizure lasts for more than five minutes, at that time it is important to call 911 or any emergency services so that the patient can get help. Now we have medications that we can administer at home, in school or anywhere that are uh, available and everyone can use them. And these are mostly nasal medications such as nasal midazolam or nasal diazepam. And those medications can be administered in the nose by anyone uh, for seizures longer than five minutes or for recurrent seizures without regaining consciousness. And it is very important because those medications can stop the status epilepticus which is very long seizure that is not stopping and we have some variants of rectal gel that is given for children so those are all important things to help somebody with a seizure and going back to my flight situation i tested the patient evaluated them helped them with that and then came back to my chair and then uh, about an hour later, I got another call with a uh, flight attendant coming, very pale, coming, doctor, can you help us again? We have another patient. So I came back and this time was in the back, somebody fainted, they have a little bit shaking, and that was not a seizure, it was a syncope. So syncope is that somebody will have low blood pressure, they will feel dizzy, lightheaded, they will look pale and then they will fall so that the head and the brain will be uh, and the heart will be on the same level so that the blood will go back and flow to the head. And this is very common in women who have dehydration or low heart rate and low blood pressure. And when they do not drink enough water or in emotional excitement, all of them can cause syncope and sometimes issues in the heart or parts or like lots of other conditions can cause the same. Thing. So syncope is different than seizures because it's mostly shorter. You will feel lightheaded at the beginning and once you fall, you regain consciousness without any confusion afterwards. And this is not considered a seizure and is not considered epilepsy and does not need any special treatment other than just drinking plenty of fluids and 
walking up uh, slowly. And you can raise the legs and then the blood flows back. And sometimes you need some fluids or drinking water to recompensate for all the lost and dropped blood pressure. And for you to learn more about epilepsy and seizures and how we treat it and all the other questions about seizures and epilepsy, you can see this video for all the information you need to know about epilepsy. And don't forget to subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest video on epilepsy and seizures and stay healthy and see you in the next one.